Hey everyone, it's Nancy Baker. I'm back again with another We Play Strong Thursday Night Live. This week we have Sarah Zadradil joining us. I'm so excited to get her on. Hopefully she gets in as quick as everyone else has got in. So let me just see. She's hopefully she gets in straight away. Just waiting for her to come on. There she is. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm not too bad, thank you. How's your day been? Um, pretty good. We only had recovery after yesterday's game, so yeah, it was fine. Is your recovery as fun as what we see in the vlogs with the uh, hitting the lights and all that? <laughs> um, that was more like the activation stuff. Yeah. Recovery is a little bit more relaxed, but still fun to be with the girls, yeah. A little bit more chilled and relaxed. Talking of last night, congratulations. Someone had the captain's armband on. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, yeah. <laughs> How was that to wear the, the captain's armband for, for your team? Um, yeah, it's a big honor for me um, to lead the team out. But it was just because our captain, um, she wasn't playing yesterday. Um, so yeah, it's an honor. But I think in our team, it doesn't really matter who wears the captain band. Because yeah, everyone is... Um, equally important and everyone yeah. likes to take responsibility but it was an honor for me yeah yeah as soon as i saw it i was like oh that's amazing obviously knowing that we had the live today i thought it would be a good little conversation <laughs> starter as well and then you got a great win it was a four nil result how how buzzing were you as a, as a team to to get that great result um yeah um really buzzing because i think it was a perfect way to end the group stage um we knew Lyon is probably going to end up first after yeah. we dropped points against Benfica in the first game. But for us, it was just important to show up yesterday and it was fun playing. So I'm super happy. Out of all the um, stadiums that you've played in so far within the Champions League, do you have a favourite? Um, I really enjoyed playing um, at Chelsea last year, to be honest. Yeah. I think it was a cool stadium. There was just no fans, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but also in Lyon, we played in the big stadium um, yeah. with a lot of people, with a big crowd. So that was really cool as well. But any Champions League game is just amazing. It's like a cool atmosphere, the anthem in the beginning and always special under the lights. So, yeah, I just love playing Champions League in general. I was going to say, I personally think Champions League can be so special because it's literally women's Champions League under the lights. It just... I don't know, something about playing football at night with, with the floodlights on, it yeah. just brings so special to the game. It does. I, I love the games in the evening. Um, also, you have to wait super long. So sometimes yeah. I'm like, ah, I don't want to wait that long to finally play. But when you are out there under the lights, it's just, it's really cool. Yeah. Obviously, you feature in a lot of our vlogs, which we absolutely love. And I've been asked by, by a few people to ask you, what is your favourite thing? about being a part of the We Play Strong blogs? Um, my favorite thing is to actually give people an insight what it's like to be a professional football player. And I don't think that um, men's football is anything like it. So yeah. it's something special for us to give them an insight and show them what does our day look like? What's our daily routine? What do we do with the team? And I also think it's kind of fun to see how we act behind the scenes with the team so that's probably my most favorite thing about it yeah um i really enjoy when you get the girls to share some fun facts i think that's <laughs> one of my my favorite things that you do because some of the some of the the facts or what they would assume sometimes to be facts that they come out with can be very very entertaining do you just spring it or do you give them a pre warning that they're going to get involved <laughs> no i just like bring it on them. I'm like, okay, tell me three facts about French people when we went to Lyon or Swedish people. So it's always funny what they come up with, especially now in Sweden, when they didn't match, like one said, Swedish people are very calm. And then there's yeah. Sophia, who is not calm at all. So it was super funny. Um, yeah, it's just something I started doing. And I probably keep doing whenever we visit a country where we have some people from there. That's perfect. Yeah. No, it, ma it makes sense. And I think it's a great way to sort of as you were saying, with with the with the vlog, who's not only your personality as a person, but your your friends and your teammates' personalities, and you get to see a different side of them to what you may only see on the pitch. And it's a great way to to get everyone 
across and when you're bringing fun questions on them they um they either panic they either sink or swim and a lot of them seem to swim and survive it <laughs> <laughs> yeah it also depends i don't think that some players want to be filmed they're more like stay in the background and then yes. you always have some teammates who are like oh yeah it's vlog time again and they're super happy so it's a good combination and i enjoy doing it and i think the people enjoy it as well yeah well talking about people getting involved and not getting involved one of your one of the coaches one of the background staff obviously in in the vlog that's just gone he got involved and i remember him saying so what is this and he was like it's the vlog and he was like oh hi hi, hi. And he loved it. <laughs> yeah that speaks for his personality he's just like that he's super open and funny and he's like what are you doing and i was just yeah i'm vlogging and he's like oh hey everyone <laughs> that's just how he is so he's really cool how do you think when you first started doing the vlogs to doing the vlogs now, do you think you've become a bit more technical with it? Do you think you've learned how to do it more or do you think you've stayed the same when you've done it? How, how do you think you've sort of developed your vlogging skills as such? Oh, I remember the first time vlogging, I was filming everything and for such a long time. So I was like sending them clips that were like, I don't know, 15 minutes long. Yeah. And then they were like, okay, calm down. <laughs> you need to send us short videos. Yeah. And we go from there. So I think that's what improved a lot. Um, but now that it's Champions League, especially on away games, it's kind of easy to film stuff because it's something new for me as well when we go yeah. to different countries. Um, with home games, to be honest, it's not that easy because there is not much going on. We always have the same routine. So yeah. you can't really show anything different than the weeks before but away games are cool and fun maybe you should start setting some challenges for the girls on the weekly vlog vlogs <laughs> maybe i'll think about that <laughs> seeing, who, seeing who can like get the best the best results or something with like a fun little challenge yeah that's a good idea actually i might think about that next time <laughs> <laughs> so i wanted to talk to you about your your playing career so i i saw that you you went out to america mm -hmm. And you played out there for a while. You was at college out there? Yes, four years, yeah. How, how was that for you? And what made you want to go to America to play out there? Well, um, to go to it was always like women's football in the US is so big. And yeah. um, then my coach from college, he contacted me and was like, do you want to come um, go to college here, play for our team? And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? So um, I went out there with my dad and we looked at everything and it was just amazing. Um, yeah, the college lifestyle was really cool and I think I improved a lot as a player but also as a person because it was my first time away from home yeah. and it was not easy in the beginning. I was on the plane and I was thinking like, what are you doing? Because obviously a family is so far away, different language. I was all by myself but it was totally worth it and it was a great time. That's, that's so good to hear. And you did quite well in your first year, didn't you? You got you got like a couple of little like acknowledgements and stuff. Do you want to tell us about that? <laughs> um, yeah, that's so different in the US because they have awards for everything, I feel <laughs> like, <laughs> which is kind of cool. I mean, they also like um, the scorer points and assist points and all the stuff. Um, and yeah, I got um, voted freshman of the year, my first year, which is like the best new player, thanks, <laughs> in the league. Um, and I think also the team of the year so it was a cool award but it's always an individual award always comes with the team so it's never something you accomplish by yourself we had a cool team we had a really good team a lot of international players and it was just fun playing with all of them was it as you said having players from from all over was it nice to get players from different parts of the world and over in america and everyone coming together how how was that for your development as a player playing what i would assume is people having so many different styles from being from countries and they all bring in their own individual styles. How, how important was that for you in your development? Um, it was very important, especially the American style of football, I would say. Um, we did a lot of weight sessions. And before I went to the US, I've never touched any kind of weight. <laughs> so when I got there and we had a gym session, I was like, what is going on? I couldn't even do a bench press. So oh, wow. I think that's um, what improved most when I was there, my um, physical ability. And I was good with the ball, but yeah. that helped me grow as a player. And that's something I'm super thankful for because nowadays you just need um, the strength and you need to do weights and you have to be in the gym to be able to compete with the best. So um, yeah, that's probably the biggest difference compared to Europe. 
And talking about obviously going to the gym, the, the physical aspect, in the women's game, we all know it is such a physical game. Like, every player wants the ball, wants to be on the ball. They want their team to be in possession and, and moving. So I can completely understand why they, they'd put you in the gym and expect you to be walking out like this by the end of the gym session. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. I think nowadays you just need it. And every team is good with the ball, but every team is super strong and physically strong and fast. And the game is getting faster and faster, in my opinion. So, yeah, you need to keep up with that. And I'm just glad that I got to improve in this part in the US. Definitely. So, obviously, for the Austrian national team and you're out playing in, in Germany, how does the football differ, like the playing style in particular? From the US, you mean, or from... No, so national team and now in, in the league that you're playing in? Um, yeah, I think it's pretty similar. I mean, here at Bayern, we want to have possession, we want to keep the ball, we want to build up the play, we want to have the ball. Um, same with Austria at the moment. We actually work on this. We try to keep the ball even more, even against good teams. Yeah. Um, it used to be our style to play more uh, um, kick and rush with Austria, to defend very well, but... Yeah, play with long balls, but I think that has changed um, because we have really good players on the team in Austria. Yeah. Um, almost every single one of us plays in the German league or in England, a couple of them. So we have good individual players. So I would say it's quite similar by now. Um, but yeah, there's still room to improve. Um, but yeah, I love that type of football when you keep the ball and when you have possession most of the time. Yeah, would you say that's your preferred playing style then to, to keep the ball, keep the possession and move yeah. around with and build up the pitch? Yes, definitely. Um, obviously, I'm more a physical player. I'm a defensive yeah. midfielder who has to win tackles in the midfield. But um, I also try to improve uh, my playing style with the ball. And I think it has gotten better ever since I've been at Bayern Munich because we have so high quality in the squad and in training you just have to bring your A game every time um, and yeah it makes fun to play here and it's super cool and it's good that I get to improve and get to get better every day when I'm out there with the girls. That's, that's great. What was it like moving over to, to Bayern Munich? The team was obviously it was probably a very exciting move for you but did you have any expectations? Was you nervous about anything? Did you know a lot of the girls? Um, I was in Potsdam for four years before yeah. that, so I knew some of the players um, and obviously one of my teammates from here, Karina Wenninger, she's Austrian as well, so I've known her for a long time, but yeah, I got the offer from Bayern and for me, I was like, okay, I want to do this, it's going to be the next step in my career because it's such a high level here and we have so great facilities and everything, but I came here with the mindset, there are so many players, it could yeah. be that you won't play that much because of our squad and because of the quality in our squad. But it was fine for me because I was like, I want to improve. I want to get better. And even though I might not get the playing time I had at Potsdam, I yeah. still want to try and I still want to accept the challenge. And what's also a big plus for me was that I'm close to home now. Um, yes. I'm from Salzburg, so I can drive two hours and I'm at home. So Munich is perfect. I love being here. I love the team. And yeah, I think we have... Big goals with the club and with the team, and I'm just glad to be part of it. Ah, amazing. So, actually, one of the questions that uh, we got sent in when we put up the question box on the Instagram story was, how do you keep up with playing football and going home, spending time with family? And obviously being closer, that's, that's made a lot easier for you as it was compared before. Do you get to see your family often, more so often, or is it still a bit... Um, here it was a little bit hard the last year because of the whole covid situation um with all those strict restrictions but um now when we were allowed to have people in the stadium my family was at most of the home games because yeah. they can just <laughs> drive out here yeah. and support me which is pretty cool and also when i have like a day and a half off or a couple of days off i can drive home whenever i want which is great and I've been gone for eight years before that. I've been in Potsdam four years, in the US four years, and I've been away from my family super long. So yeah, that's a big plus, and I'm a big family person, and I'm just happy that I get to see them more often now. Uh, what is your favorite thing to do when you go home with the family, or even by yourself, if you want some time? <laughs> um, probably cuddle with the dog, <laughs> my brother's dog, yeah. 
that's, um, a- that's probably oh. one of my favorite things to do and go for a walk with her um but yeah just spend time with my parents my brother and his wife and the dog <laughs> and the, i feel like you can't really argue someone saying you you saying i want to spend time with a dog i feel like everyone would just be like yeah everyone likes dogs everyone likes everyone likes pets it's just such a great answer you can't can't argue it at all yeah especially they're always happy when they see you so it's like you know it's like (laughs) yeah so um rocky popped up earlier and she mentioned that she liked the jumper you were wearing and obviously i like the jumper you are wearing me too a very special jumper only a select few have got it has it got something on the hood as well am i making that up yeah it actually has like the stars on the hood as well very very it's really cool. I'm super happy that I got the jumper and Rocky. I saw you got one as well, I think. So that's pretty cool. But very on brand. <laughs> <laughs> but is, the, the, is it comfortable? It looks comfy. It is comfy, yeah. I like a little bit of the oversize. And yeah. It's oversized, so yeah, it's really cool. I like wearing it. Are the, are the girls in, the, in your team jealous that, that you've got it? I'm pretty sure they are. So maybe we can send them some. <laughs> So we obviously have the like Christmas break coming up and the, the winter break as, as we call it. Uh, we, one of the questions that I've been sent in is what will your winter break look like? My winter break will be at home um, with my family. I'm going to drive home after the, our last game on Sunday. So I get to go home on Monday. And also my brother and his wife, they just had a little daughter. So I'm super excited oh. to see her and probably spend most of the time with them and with my family and yeah that's my winter plan nothing special maybe go yeah go on a ski tour in the mountains if we have a lot of snow and just a typical austrian thing (laughs) yeah oh that's that's so exciting i wish i could just go off and go to the mountains but we don't have that here in london so i i I don't have that option unfortunately (laughs) yeah yeah it's pretty winter in austria is pretty amazing yeah it's very pretty it looks like extremely pretty yeah it's like i don't know if you've seen the sound of music that's usually all the americans know that movie they're like the sound of music oh yes and i've never seen it but that's what they picture when i talk about austria so it's like (laughs) i don't don't, i don't think i've ever seen the sound of music i don't want to pretend that i have and then you ask me a question i have no idea (laughs) okay so it must be an america thing because they have all seen it it was so funny yeah Maybe it is. So we've had a few questions come in and I thought I'd just reel reel off a couple to to you. The first one is, which I always think is a really nice one and it's good for for young players who are growing up, is what advice would you give for young aspiring professional footballers? Um, I would say that even though you have to make a lot of sacrifices throughout your career, because it's not always easy. Um, On weekends, you are gone most of the time. When I was younger, after school, you go to training and you just don't have as much free time as maybe your peers, Um, but it will all be worth it at the end because football gives you so much back. Um, It's a sport where you make amazing friends, you make great experiences and you have so much fun being out there with the girls. And so it will be worth it. And even if you struggle from time to time, keep going and believe in yourself. And yeah, in the end, it will be worth it. I love that. That's a really, really good advice. Also, why why were you were giving your advice? Beth Mead popped up and said hello. And uh, it just reminded me of the selfies we got sent of you two. I remember it and sent them and I was like, I love this. This is great. <laughs> hey, Beth. <laughs> <laughs> great, great content. How did you go up to after the game? Did you go up to Beth and say, let's get let's get a selfie? Yeah, I actually did. I mean, we know each other just from We Play Strong and from, yeah. Um, But I think she's an amazing person. And what I've seen on all her vlogs and stuff, she's really fun. So I think we will really get along (laughs) in real life. And so after the game, when we played against England, I was just like, hey, We Play Strong squad, let's take a selfie. And yeah. Love that. And obviously, we have uh, Laura, who's also in the squad. And you two are super, super close. Whenever you're on, like, you're all, you're always together how fun is it working and well working as in football mm. with with Laura and being around her because you do seem like you have such a good friendship yeah I've known Laura 
I think since I'm 14 years old and we have been through our whole national team career together and I would say she's my best friend so I'm just super happy to have her with me at the national team. Unfortunately we haven't played for the same club for a long time now. Maybe again at some point <laughs> you never know but I'm just super glad to have her and I'm thankful for her friendship. How amazing is it to play with your best friend? For your national team like that's just kind of unheard of like I what that's amazing to hear like you, get to, you just get to play the game you love with literally one of your best friends like how how is that even real Do you know yeah that? <laughs> that's amazing but I think that's also super special about our national team we are all super close and we have been together since I'm 17 I think that's when I played my first game for the senior national team and all the girls were there so it's like one generation and we've been so close not just on the pitch but even off the pitch and we are super close friends and I think that's what makes our team special that we're not just players we're actually friends and yeah we fight for the same thing and so it's always fun when we get together and get to play games. Ah, that's lovely a question just come in which I, I always like to ask because I think it's really special how does it make you feel when you see young fans with a shirt with your name on the back or coming up to you after games and asking for selfies or autographs or to, to sign shirts like what does that stuff mean to you as not a player like just as a person for the role you're playing with some of these people in their in their lives with maybe without even um yeah it makes me super proud and I think that's what we play for and that's what it is all about um, we want to be role models for the next generation so when I see someone with a jersey of mine or someone who wants a signature of course I'm always gonna go up there and sign the shirt or whatever and take my time for the fans because yeah that is what it's all about and we want to inspire the next generation we want to show them yes women can actually play football they play football super well they can do it professionally and yeah that's what we want to give them and so I'm always happy when I see a little girl out there. Love that. Talking of the next generation are there young players that are either in the national team in like the younger age groups or at five that you think are gonna really really like take off soon like amazing career is there anyone that we should have our eye on out for and look, look out for their journey. Yeah, we have, I think we have uh, a lot of young players in the national team now who are actually really tough um, in the competition at the moment because they want our spot and they're really good. So uh, I'm glad to see that. And if I have to name one or two um, from our national team, it's hard to just name one, but one of my close friends, she plays for Tobina Potsdam. She's a young player. It's Marie Höbinger. And I think she has the potential to become uh, a really big player in Austria. And I just love watching her play and I can't wait to see where the journey takes her. But overall, we have super good young players joining our squad and that's what we need. That's what we need to get better. And we need the competition out there on the practice field. And I'm just glad that we have that. Definitely. And something that I forgot to bring up earlier, but I remember thinking it last night when I was watching the game. Um, the kit you lot wore last night is incredible. Like, I really, really, really like it. Like, I'm a big, big fan. Yeah, yeah, it's cool because it has, like, the mountains on it. It's supposed to be, like, the Bavarian mountain style, and I really like it as well. I think it's my favorite um, kit this year. And yeah. the Champions League kit is always special, but it's really cool. I like it as well, yeah. I was sat watching it, and I was like, I want that kit. <laughs> I really like that. I was like, I didn't realize how much I liked it. And then one of the girls on, and she had like the long sleeve version on us. And I was like, yeah, I really like this kit. <laughs> you should get one. <laughs> I, de I definitely think I should. I, I was very, very impressed by it. I'm a big kit person. I just, just go based off kits. Like if I like a kit, no matter what team it is, I would, I will wear the kit and get the kit just purely off me, like based off <laughs> me, like. Yeah, you should get one with my name and number on it and I'm going to sign it then. <laughs> I'll get one with your name and number and get you to sign it and just be like, hi, can you sign this for me? <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would totally do that. <laughs> but confirming that you'd sign it and you wouldn't just look at me and be like, not today. <laughs> I will, no worries. <laughs> um, so what is your, do you support a team? Who's your, do you have a favourite team or a 
bar the team you play for, obviously. Obviously, um, but I also support Red Bull Salzburg. That's my okay. that's my home team. Um, so I'm from Salzburg. So Red Bull Salzburg is definitely one of the teams I support. Um, yeah, and they are doing great things this year. They just made it to the quarterfinals, uh, to the last 16, I think. What's after? Yeah, last 16 in the Champions League. So that's really cool and amazing and a big step. So I would say that's probably my team I support the most on the men's side. Nice. And I've just seen a question that's come up and it said, what is your most memorable game that you've played? That's quite a good but tough question. That is a tough question because I've had so many games in my career, but um, I would say just the Euros in general in 2017. Yeah. Because we had such an amazing run and we were the underdog and we made it to the semi final. So that was huge for us, um, for our team. So probably every game there. But also um, last year, Champions League, it was my first season in the Champions League and it was so cool to play there and to be in the semi final again. Yeah. So, yeah, I couldn't name one game in particular, but probably those two events, yeah. Uh, that's a, that's not, not too bad what, you, what you're saying, to be fair. So, <laughs> decent, decent answers. <laughs> one of my questions that I absolutely love as well, and a lot of people have asked it, makes me know it's a great question, is if you had to choose a five-a-side team and you were the manager, who would make you? women's players um i would def definitely pick my best friend so lauren would be on my team yeah um i would have alexia, alexia puteas on my team because i think she's an amazing player she's incredible yeah and then i will probably fill the rest of my team with bayern munich and austrian players <laughs> <laughs> so i go with manu zinsberger in goal yep um I go with our captain from Bayern, Lina Magul. Yep. And, oh God, there are so many good players on my teams. I go with Lea Schiller because she just scores from every opportunity she yeah. has. But there would be so many other players I could name, but that's probably my five-a-side team and we would smash it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. We just had a question sent in asking, if you could play in any other position, what would it be? If I could play in any other position, I think striker would be fun because yeah. then I actually get to score a lot. Or may I don't know if I would, but I would get into more yeah. scoring positions. <laughs> so I would try striker, yeah. I might would talk to my coach. Hmm? Would you not want to go and go? No way. I'm not going <laughs> to go and go. That's not my. No, no, no. <laughs> I think goalkeepers are very, very brave. I, I could not do it. They are super brave. I, yeah. I admire their bravery and I'm just thankful that we have them. <laughs> thankful that it doesn't have to be you that goes in goal and, and has to stop some, some of the shots that, that they would come up against. Who is the player when you come up against them you think, oh no, this one again? Who is one of the hardest players to go up against? Um, and let me think about my career. I think one of the hardest players to play against, especially in our league, um, would be Alex Pop from yep. Wolfsburg. She's injured right now, but she's a really good center midfield player. And it's always tough to play against her because she's physical as well, but good technique. So in the league, it would be Alex, I think. Yeah, that's a, that's a great shout. As soon as you said her name, I was like, yeah, I can, I can imagine. Yeah, no, she's really good. And hopefully she will be back on the pitch soon. Yeah, it's, uh, it's always great to be able to go and play against players who you, you know are going to push you to be the best that you can be and, and develop you as a player, even though you're going against them. It can be a struggle, but it, it's, it's all good in the long run, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. And I think that's what the Champions League also gives us, the opportunity to compete against the best, not just the best teams, but also the best players. So it's super cool to be part of that. Definitely. And I think the last thing I want to want to ask you before we say goodbye, I noticed that you watch a lot of women's football. You watch a lot of football in general. Um, you pick out, even in the vlogs, you pick out what you did well, what you didn't do well. You pick out what other teams are doing well. How important is it for you as a, as a person to, 
support the game that you play, but also learn from it? Yeah, I think by watching games, you can always learn something and take something from it. Um, it doesn't matter if uh, men's football or women's football, uh, just by watching it and watching players maybe you look up to, you can still improve and improve your game and see some tactical points or technical points, whatever. So I just love watch watching football in general and supporting my teams always, but also watch my Austrian teammates when they play with the club teams or my club teammates when they play, play with the national team it's always cool when you also know the players definitely thank you so much for joining us this evening it has been so so great to talk to you and learn about you and learn about your journey and all the advice you've given um as a Thank you so much for joining us. And I'm sure we will cross over again soon. Obviously, we will see you in our vlogs. I hear next week that there was potentially a bit of go-karting. Someone didn't do so well. I actually did well, but I don't want to give too much away right now. But yeah, <laughs> I did better than what I expected. So you do not want to miss that vlog. I'm going to be in a go-kart and I'm going to smash it. We so, yeah. look forward to that. <laughs> Thanks for having me. It was Thank fun talking to you. Your evening. See you later. Thank Bye. you. Take care. Bye.